theyeshiva.net. Eretz Horim of Koyas Lamotor Hashamayim Tishtamayim. In Parshas Ekev, Moshe Rabbeinu speaks to Kla Yisrael about the unique virtues and extraordinary qualities and characteristics of Eretz Yisrael. And one of the things he says is, it's a Eretz Harim, it's a country, a land of mountains, and it's a land of koyas, of valleys, limitar hashamayim, tishtamayim, to the rain of heaven, does it get irrigated, does it drink uh, water, does it, does it quench its thirst, limitar hashamayim, tishtamayim. Zogda Balatanya. Okay, here there's a long parenthesis with references to uh, where this Pasuk is discussed in Chazal and in Medrash. This is by the Tzamech Tzedek. But five lines later you have, one, two, three, five lines later you have the end of the parenthesis. Lahavin mashakasav limmatar kimimatar havalele meimar. Pashtin diktuk. The proper grammar should have been mimatar hashamayim tishtamayim. From the reign of heaven. From the rain of heaven, not to the rain of heaven. He makes if the Pasik says, Kibitzala Malikim Asa Saadam. We all know the Pasik in Parshas Bereshis. The human being was Hashem made the human being in Salam Alakim in the image of Hashem. Pidish. One of the interpretations of this is Tselem, a Tselem is Tsura by Letas. It's a protruding Tsura, visage, image. Shekshamat Fisimba. And when you imprint it, since it protrudes, nasa shekeya, it becomes indented. Because since it protrudes, it's, it's called tzura by lettuce, it's outward. So therefore, when you're matfisbo, when you make an imprint with it, that tzura becomes engraved or indented, becomes shekeya, which means submerged in the product that you're, you're doing the imprint in. Kemavur, gabiritsu is shaltfil and shalreish. As it's explained in Sifre Kabbalah. But the two is the straps with the film Sharaj, Sha Adam who kechoisim hamis hapech. The Pasik says in Chihashirim, Simani kechoisim areshacha. Place me like a seal on your head. What's why a seal? You remember the Pasik in Shirashirim? Simani kechoisim, make me like your seal. A stamp. Why chhoisim? Because a chhoisim is mishapech. It becomes topsy turvy, it becomes reversed. If the, you have two types of seals, you have a seal in which the seal is protrudes its boilet, and then when you place the seal, it becomes indented. And you have a seal that's not boilet, but it's actually um, um, inverted. It's um, recessed. It, it's recessed, right? And then when you do, when you seal that, then on the contrary, it becomes boilet. It becomes protruded. So, so he says, "Why semani kechaisim on Adam as kechaisim on mesapich mismol shal maila nasa yemin lamata." When above there is smile, there is the energy from the left. Below it comes out in the opposite direction. It comes out of yemin lamata. It comes out right on the below, and the same is true the other way around. From yemin lamaila becomes smile mata. Kenu be Mishnas Chsidim. The source of this is Mishnas Chsidim, one of the great Kabbalistic works that was authored by a man named Rabbi Amnuel Chai Riki. is one of the great uh, Mekubalim. He has a sefer called Mishnas Chsidim. Betikon Tfilin Perik Yidal and Oishe Sha Adam Ulagabi Zeir Ampin Kechoisem Ha Mishapech. That's why Simeni Kechoisem Al Rishecha by the Tfilin. It's like a chaisim. It also has to do with uh, a chaisim. Why, why, why is it with a chaisim? Because a chaisim is mishapech. What is in the source comes out in the opposite direction in the ultimate product. The mirror image. Huh? Mirror the mirror image. image, right. The mirror image. So when I'm looking in the mirror, what's on the right on one side is on the left on the other side. What's on the left on one side is on the right on the other side. You have that also in Tefillin Sharej. There's the big machlekes between uh, if you go from the perspective of the one who wears the tefillin or the perspective of the one who reads the tefillin, mitzad ha-meniach, mitzad ha But here we're talking about the choysem, that if it's recessed in the choysem, it's going to protrude in the imprint. And if it protrudes in the choysem, 
it's going to be indented in the imprint. Always mishapich the other way. What is the concept here? The Ksiv, the Pasuk says, Lecha Hashem Hagdula. The Pasuk in Divrei Hayamim, we say this every single morning. Lecha Hashem Hagdula, Vahagvura, Vahatiferes, Vahanetzach. Vahu Midas Chazda, Yishabah, Migdulasa. Gdula, which precedes Gvura, represents his chesed, which comes from his greatness. It becomes reversed below. Remember, that which is yamin above becomes smoil below. That which is smoil above becomes yamin below. Becomes the opposite direction. So he says, L'cha Hashem HaGdula. But what happens, L'mata? K'da'ashkechan b'avram avinu olo v'ashalim. We see b'avram, Avram says, V'anoichi ofer v'efram. He says about himself, I am earth and ashes. What does this mean? Dehinei. There's two types of chesed. There's chesed that you give somebody from extras. You have extra, you throw it away. Or you give it away. That's not real chesed. Chesed means a person gives from something that's meaningful to him, something that's part of his life, not moistures, not extra. Zumidas Yishmol. Yishmol was also a part. Yishmol was a very social guy. So in many ways he had the qualities of his father. His father was extroverted, his father loved people, his father, but there was a difference. Yishmol gave away the moisture, gave away the extras. That which affects him directly, that Yishmol would not, uh, would not share. Rakamayisha Metzinu, we see by Avram Avinu, Shebechazor Osoi, Pora Hakaf Oisov. Avram Avinu, it says that he went back, he went to Metzram and then he came back. So Chazal said, Rashi brings it that he paid back Hakaf Oisov, he paid back his debts. So he says, Shaloi Loima, so he touches, it wasn't stama debt for expenses. It was even that he touches a new vart. Usually he touches a kafaisov, he was staying in Motel 6 from Israel to Egypt, you know, going down to Egypt. So he had to pay back because it, it was all on a credit card. He touches, he had to pay back because he was giving tzedakah even when he didn't have. Shaloi Loima, Shechayacha Koidman. Naturally, the assumption of people is you say, Chayacha Koidman, and that's the halacha. My life comes first. If I have extra, I share. Avram Avinu wasn't that way. Avram Avinu shared even, he treated others like he treated himself. He didn't see himself as superior to everybody else. On the contrary. This is generally the quality of Mayim. The Gemara says that Mayim, they always find the lowest place and that's where they go. So Avram Avinu was in the Pchina of Mayim that naturally he always connected to somebody who was in a lower place. He would never be content with not going down there and reaching out to that person. So what happens is from Gedula Lamaila, which is expression, that's a protruding seal, the way it's translated in the human emotion is that it creates a sense of anoichi offer ve'efer, a sense of a per, the, the sense of a person who's not protruding, who on the contrary, who feels extremely humble, who's like Mayim, Yoidimakum Gavaila Makam Namu, who's Mesim Atzma Kishirayim. So Lakha Hashem Hagdula is a protruding chaysem, which is chesed, which is expressive, which is greatness. The way that translates in Avramavin, or the way that translates Lamata is, what happens to the imprint? It becomes recessed. When, it's when, indented. What do you say that Gedula is chesed, except for the fact that it precedes Gvura? I mean, that's what, that's what tells us that Gedula means chesed. Yeah, in other words, the chashem agdul, the agvura. And where do you see that means protrusion, the, a protruding type of chesed? How is that implicit in the word gedula? I understand, that's obviously recessed. But what do you see gedula carries the connotation of, of protrusion? I, I would assume the pashtus that gedula means an expression of greatness, of largeness, of expansiveness, of, expansiveness, of majesty. So the gedula, lamaila, creates the bittle, the sense of humility, lamata and avramavinu. The question before on the on the tefillin, someone's asking. It says semenik chesim ali becha. I'm sorry, semenik chesim. Yeah. Ali becha. No, Rabbi Bishai. Yes, yes. Thank you. I stand corrected. Semenik chesim ali becha. Right. Place me like a seal on your heart. Vehine avas Hashem believe 
Amoy, the Ava of Hashem in the heart of his nation, is Ke'esh Bayara, is like a glowing, a burning fire. Kedixiv, it says in Shirashirim, Rishafer, Rishveyesh. Her glow is a glow, like a fiery glow, a coal that's on fire. It's called Rishreshef, is a coal that's burning. Rishafer, Rishveyesh, Kemoisha, Eish, Chafetza, Betiva. Lalas Lamaila, Besharsha, just like fire, naturally seeks, it yearns to go upward. The soul of the Jew by nature desires to cleave in Hashem and depart, transcend the material. Now it's the opposite direction. When you have smoil lamaila, not gedula, but gvura. That's the concept of the left side, which represents histalkos, aloofness, departing, moving away, lehistalek. So then, what happens, lamaila? That's a recessed seal. So then, lamata, you have yimin. You have the tremendous love, lamata. So from chesed, lamaila comes, from yimin, lamaila comes, smoy lamata. From smoy lamaila comes, Yemin Lamata. Vizau Shakasov Eretz Harim of Kayas. That's why it says about Eretz Israel. What's Eretz Israel? It's a mountain, it's a land of mountains and valleys. Mountains represents the Gedula, a person's sense of expansiveness, like a tall, splendid mountain. Kayas, a valley, is on the contrary, it's recessed. It's a Noichi of Eifer, it's a place of humility. Ubi Sarusa de la this represents how both of these qualities are experienced by the person in his own Isairus. So you have here the two qualities that define Eretz Yisrael, fire and water. Pirush, Eretz Iknesis Yisrael. Eretz represents here the community of Israel, the Jewish people, are the land. The land, the earth, contains in it endless resources and treasures. That's what a Nisham is, Eretz, it's a land. Yesh Baharim, it has in it mountains. This is the yearning, the going upwards. The Gemara says in Psachim, Avram called it a mountain. We have Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Avram, Kare Har, and Yitzchak, Kare Sada, and Yaakov, Kare Bayis. There's different types of mountains. Yesh Ava Besimcha, Yesh Bemerirus. There's a love that's associated with joy. There's a love that's associated with frustration. Like Choylas Ava, you're lovesick. V'derech klal, harim hainu yisarusa delasata b'chines choysim boilet shemilmata lamayla. The harim, this is the arousal from below. It's the choysim boilet, the seal that protrudes milmata lamayla, that comes milmata and goes upward lamayla. This is the Eish, because the Eish, the, the Eish, huh? goes upwards here. The valley is the Chaisim Shekeya. It's the recessed seal. This is a sense of nullification, a sense of awe. He treats himself the opposite of arrogant, like Shirai. Upkoyis lashin rabim, why are the pkoyis lashin rabim again? Kiesh gamkin pchinis yiri tato, yiri logic, like in love. There's different forms of awe, there's a lower awe, there's a higher awe. Kiyodua, as it's known. Asher dalad oisius hashavaye, the four letters of Yudke Vofke. Hein dechilu u rechimu, rechimu u dechilu. It starts off with dechilu is yira in Aramaic. And then it goes to Ava, and then it goes to another Ava, and then it goes to Yira. So you have the lower level of Yira, followed by the lower level of Ava, followed by the higher level of Ava, followed by the higher level of Yira. There's two forms of love and awe. That's why it's a land of mountains, not mountain, and valleys. And you have two types. 
G'dayla v'el yoyne yoysim yisarusa d'layla nimshach ha'yidei h. This oiris from above that comes from this oiris of below in a state of water is greater than the Osiris that comes through fire. Meaning, Ki mebchines Osiris de lasata she mebchines chaisim boilet. She melmata nimshech melmaila mebchines chaisim shekeya. From a person being protrudes, but a person protrudes, lamaila, what does it create? The opposite, a sealed chaisim. Um Osiris de lasata she mebchines shkio bittel. When a person has a Osiris that's recessed, Shkia bittel nimshach isarusa de leila gilu ibchinas chaisim boilet. It creates above the opposite, the protruding chaisim. The hainu gilu yer in sof belil levushim amastirim. The revelation of ein sof without any garments, as the pasuk says, v'lo yikonef oid meirecha v'hayu einecha roisus meirecha v'im kain isarusa de lasata shu ibchinas mayim shu ibchinas shkiu bittel meisim atzma kishirayim. Mamshich is a Rusa de la Ela El Yoyne Yoyser, Mimasha Nimshagade is a Rusa de la Sata of Hinnis Rishveesh. The Sarusa de la Sata of Mayim, which represents the Bittal, not the fire. The fire is the yearning above, the protrusion. But the Mayim is Mokem Nomo, Hanoichi off of Afer. That creates a deep Sarusa de la Ela. Why? Because that creates protrusion above. In other words, God completely reveals himself. Where the person's expansiveness creates above a sense of concealment, that the seal above gets concealed. So it works both ways. The chaisim works both ways. When Hashem is megala himself, gdula, it creates a noichi of ve'efer by Avram Avinu, the chaisim shekeya. When Hashem, on the contrary, conceals himself, the chaisim shekeya, it creates lamata, the yamin, the gilui, the esh, right? The av, when he conceals himself. That's what he says. When there's a stalkus lamayla, smile, there's yamin lamat. But it also goes the other way around. When there is shaykeya, when there is boilet lamata, yamin lamata, in other words, protrusion, fire that rises up, it creates lamayla, a chaysim shaykeya. On the other hand, when by a person there is mayim, anoichi afa ve'efer shaykeya, it creates lamata, the deepest, the gilui, without any levushim. That's why he says that the isarusa de leila that comes from the mayim is far greater than the isarusa de leila that comes from the esh. Because the esh is chosim boilet, so it creates shakeya. God is recessed, but from the mayim is a chosim shakeya, so it creates lamayla, a chosim boilet, the absolute, the absolute revelation. Okay. This also you could see in the Posset. From the Harim comes the Pekoyas. When Hashem is in a state of mountains, it creates valleys. From the Harim comes the Pekoyas. Zoyar says... Vayove lo yayin vayesht. What's the lo? Mecha kfula. The Zoya says Yaakov diluted the wine with water. Arme mayim le yayin. Yitzchak wanted a good meal, and a good meal you have wine. Yaakov put in water to the wine. That's the loy. It wasn't regular. It was a double drink, it was a double beverage. Why did he put wine into, water into the wine? Because he wanted the water, he wanted the chaisim shaykeya, not the wine, which is expansiveness. Nichnas yayin, yotzasoid, he wanted the mayim, because it creates a much deeper blessing. Vizel limitar hashamayim tishtamayim. This answers the possible. Okay, I think we need a little bit of, uh, okay. take a little hafsake here. No kidding. <laughs> okay. Wine break. A wine break, yeah? <laughs> or maybe we have to dilute it with a little water, no? Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. Well, the time of the Shas, they had to. They had to. Mizug Hayayim was inevitable. You had to because if not, there was. Uh, huh? Unless you're a great connoisseur, you know, and you're an expert on drinking. Huh? They used to do his metaphor also. You see, the valley is the fertile place. Take a little seed, you, you, 
you know, you plant it in the fertile valley, in the, in the fertile valley. You're saying valleys are more fertile. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's a lot, a lot that was said here, a lot that was said here, and really, like in every one of these Maimarim, you have here a, uh, a uh, perspective, both <coughs> in terms of Avaidus Hashem, which is what he's discussing, but it also, it trickles down, it's reflected almost in every area of life. He made a statement that the four letters of Yudke Vavke represent four emotions. The Chilu, Rechimu, Rechimu, the Chilu, which are Aramaic words for Yira, Ava, Ava, Yira. In other words, the lowest He, Yudke Vavke, so we go from bottom up. The last He is Yira. Then you have a Vav, is Ava. Then you have another He, is Ava. And then you have the Yud, the highest, the first letter, which represents the highest, because it's it's, it comes down. It's, it's an evolution, Yud and He and Vav and He. It's a seminal point that represents the ultimate year, and that's why it's very small. Huh? The highest year, that the first year, that's Yira. Yira, Ava, Ava, Yira. It's a different Yira. <laughs> it's a different Yira. This Yira Tata, he said, the lower level of Yira, that's the beginning. Then you go to Ava, the lower level of Ava, Ava Zuta. Then you go to the next level of Ava, Ava Rabba. Then you go to Yira Ilah, the higher level of Yira. And that's Eretz Harim of Kayas. What's Eretz Yisrael? Eretz Yisrael is the Jewish soul, is Eretz Yisrael. This is even in Pshat. The Svas Emes says, Moira de Kavart, it says in Balak, Bilam says, Meiroish Tzurim Er Enu, Umigvoyes Asherenu. So there's many interpretations. For some as Bilam looks at Eretz Yisrael and he says, May Rosh Tzudim. As I look at the peak of the mountains, Er Enu, I see the Jewish soul. If you study the soil of Eretz Yisrael, it mirrors Neshama Yisrael. In other words, the very land of Eretz Yisrael is the Jewish soul. There's an organic connection between the Jewish people and the Holy Land. Like Rashi says in Bechukaisai, that in the Teichich Hashem says, when you get exiled, the land will remain desolate. So it actually says, it's a Psura Teiva. That no nation, empire, or culture will be able to successfully settle and make the land fertile. And it's an interesting phenomenon that when you study history, many attempted, because Israel is a very strategic piece of land between the south and the north, and uh, Europe it was and Asia? between Europe and Asia, yeah. and uh, the, 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 land, the, land, the, the, the key to get to Egypt, and so forth. That's why so many wars, like somebody once said Israel is a great country, it's just in a bad neighborhood. Right. <laughs> but it's also a very strategic neighborhood. So, um, so in, in, in Gashmias, it was a good place, Rocks there. but nobody was successful with it. So this is a fascinating thing. So the Sfasema says, Bilam says, Me roish tzurim er enu. I see him in the mountains. In the mountain that I I could see a picture, an image of the Jewish soul. They're deeply connected. It's not two separate things. Now, so Eretz is the Jewish soul, which is Eretz Yisrael, connected to Eretz Yisrael. It's a place of mountains, a place of valleys. Mountains is two levels of Ahava. Valley is two levels of Yira. The mountain protrudes. You're in a state of, of, of growth, of absolute expansiveness. The valley, of course, represents humility. What are these four stages? So every relationship has these four stages, or could have these four stages, and they begin with, always you start with Yira. Then Ahava, then Ahava, then Yira. And you'll see here the connection with the previous Mimer, obviously. You always start with Yira. A relationship starts with Yira. In simple English, it's called respect. Boundaries. If there's no respect for the other boundaries, you don't start a relationship. That's not a relationship. If the relationship immediately starts with me choking you, with me owning you, with me crazy about you, obsessed. This is not a relationship. It may be an infatuation, it may be fun, it may be exciting for a few minutes maybe for a few days, maybe for a longer time, but a re real relationship begins with Yira. Yira is a sense of awe, which represents reverence, distance, respect, boundaries. There is you, and there is me. And my space ends here, and your space begins here. 
That's yiratata. It's the basic respect. I'm now talking about, about it being Adam Lachavera. Of course, when you're talking between a person and Hashem, it's elevated to a, a deeper state of consciousness, but it's, the concept is similar. From there, a person could go to the next stage, which is love, a lower level of love. What's the lower level of love? I love you because I enjoy you, I appreciate you, I gain so much from you. Like we learned before in Tazriya, so is Tazas Almanas Lekabel Pras. I want a piece of you. Do I want all of you? I'm not sure I want all of you, because <laughs> that's a whole different part of the process. Now, there was a philosopher who once said, we don't love other people, we love our version of them. Okay, think about that. There's a truth to that. We don't love other people, we love our version of them. I love my version of you. I have a certain version of you, and that's what I love, that's what I like. But essentially, it's all part of the same idea. It's love that is based on, I love myself, and you give so much to me, and therefore I love you. So who do I really love? I love the you that contributes to the I. Now, that's not an evil thing. It's a good thing. In fact, the whole world runs, the whole world revolves around that. All business partnerships, all basic acquaintances and friendships, I mean... I gain something from you and you gain something from me, right? That's why we're just partners, there's investors, there's managers. Everyone has a give and a take and we contribute together and hopefully to a larger good and, and, and that's how it works. And people don't always have to over over analyze and dissect it and many relationships are based on this, you know. The wife gets from the husband and the husband gets from the wife and then that's that's avazuta. It's a very deep, powerful love. But then there's a much higher love. The higher love is actually when I love you. I actually love you. I don't only love my version of you. Or in other words, I don't only love the you that contributes to the I, but I actually really cherish you. I want a relationship with you. That's the higher love. That's the second Ava. So we had already Yira, Ava, and Ava. Okay? Then, and then we have the highest level of Yira which can only come after the first three. And the higher level of year is really the higher Ava, the way it translates in the person, so to speak, forfeiting their ego in the presence of the other. Because Ava, by definition, there's always a sense of I, Yesh Misha'ay, of I love you. Even though today in text messages we don't have to say the word I, but we know in English you can't say love you. There has to be an I that loves you. So it's not just mitzad grammar, it's also mitzad toichen. Love, by definition, is about the I. I am experiencing an emotion towards you. The question is what the nature of that love is. Where yira, yira is actually where the person is capable of completely choosing, choose, I say the word choosing very importantly, with my disclaimers, choosing to forfeit or melt away in the reality or the presence of the other. This is Yudke Vavke. It starts with Yira, it goes to Ava, it goes to Ava, and it goes to Yira. Yud, and then the He, and then the Vav, and the He, that's the four letters of Shem Yudke. Eretz Yisrael, like the Jewish soul, is Eretz Harim of Kayas. There are two mountains, and there are two valleys. But here comes the unique distinction that he's making. And this is the Chaysim the Chaysim HaMesapech. When Hashem reveals Himself, it translates into a Neuchi Ofer Ve'efer. Translates into a, I shouldn't use the word recession, but it translates, maybe yes, it translates into the person feeling like a valley, becoming like a valley, an open, empty space that's, that's recessed. When Hashem conceals Himself, it translates into a sense of expansiveness, of greatness. Now you would think it should be the other way around, but it's not, because it's always kechoysim hamisapich, and the same is converse. Why is this? The answer is because when infinity reveals itself, the person loses their sense of self. When infinity conceals itself, the sense of self emerges. So God suspends His infinity in order to create room 
for human identity to emerge. The human being now suspends his identity to allow for God's infinity to emerge. So by Hashem concealing his energy, it allows for human energy to become far more expansive. So from smoil lamaila becomes yimin lamata. From smoil lamaila becomes yimin lamata, the person becomes the mountain. From yimin lamaila, which is gilui, Avram Avinu says, Anoichi, Afar, Ve'efer. So by Matan Torah, when they have the greatest revelation, Atarei Suladas, Ki Hashem Uwa Lekim Eidnoid Melvade, Vayara Om, Vayonu, Vayamdu, Meirachaik. They felt distance. They felt in the most humble space. The more revelation of infinity, the more humble you become. Which really brings out a very fundamental idea generally about Atav Echartonu Mikol Ha'am. One of the hardest topics in today's Jewish world is the chosen people. Maybe not this crowd, I'm not sure, depends who, but generally it's not politically correct. It's not PC to talk about CP. Did you understand? Yeah. It's not politically correct to talk about chosen people. It's not PC to talk about CP because it... It, 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 it conjures racism, bigotry, intolerance, I'm better than you. So I'm not now getting into that whole sensitive and important topic, you know, what the definition of racism is and intolerance and bigotry and so forth. But tell the worst thing you can tell an enlightened Jew is, you're the chosen people. No, I'm not. I'm a human being. I'm a member of the human race. Stop using these ancient, archaic images that just create problems, anti-Semitism. So Ali Wiesel used to say Jews were chosen, not necessarily for benefits. Or uh, who said, Tuvia said, uh, Tuvia says, uh, why don't you choose somebody else, right? I know we're the chosen people. Maybe for once you'll choose somebody else so we'll be able to have a better life. Fiddler. Yeah, the Ptevia. It's like the Bukhah. Are you Jewish? Huh? When the Bukhah goes over to someone, yeah, are you yeah, Jewish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very bro- sensitive issue. It's a sensitive issue. Now, it's a funny thing. Tell an Italian you're the chosen people. Of course. <laughs> Tell a Brit you're the chosen. Of course. Sun never set in the British Empire. Tell a Japanese fellow you're chosen. What's the question? Sun rises first in Japan. Tell a Puerto Rican, tell anybody, tell an Arab, everybody is chosen, they like it. You tell a Jew he's chosen, it's like the worst curse in the world. And they're very embarrassed by it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the secular, so to speak, educated, enlightened Jew. The truth is that there's a fundamental misunderstanding of what God choosing you means. Why are Jews so allergic to this? Or to put it differently, why do we have a pathological concept of self-hate. Jews have an issue with themselves that is very, very complex, very deep. Where does it come from? The answer is this Vart. You see, when you're chosen by a boss of Adam, when you're chosen by a king, by a uh, top executive, by a monarch, by an overlord, by a major influential person who chooses you, it naturally naturally conjures or could conjure a feeling of arrogance I'm better than everybody else I was chosen you were not chosen so I could see that in itself in two ways I could view it as a as an invitation or a privilege to help other people I could see it as an opportunity to abuse other people and that's really the real key issue it's not whether you're chosen or not it's what you do with your feeling of being chosen but that's if a human king chooses you you could feel superior to other people when God chooses you, however, or to put it in the words of this Maimon, when there's Lecha Hashem Hagdula, when there's Atta Reis Ladas, when there's expression, when there's Yemin Lamaila, then what happens to the person who's chosen is actually something very, very different. When God chooses you to be in a relationship with Him, it means infinity invites you to be in a relationship with infinity. But to be in a conscious relationship with infinity, you know what that means. That means your ego got to go to the dustbin. So what do you become? You become a valley. 
you don't become a mountain, you become a valley, because in the presence of infinity, you realize there's nothing else, so you are just part of infinity. You don't have a separate ego. So when God chooses you, it's basically a choice to become nothing. He's choosing you to have a conscious relationship with infinity, in other words, to become aware of the fact that your ego has no separate identity outside of him. So whenever I hear a Jew screaming that he's not part of the chosen people, I say, ah, now I know that you're Jewish. It's so hard for you to feel chosen because that's what it means you're chosen by God. That the slightest sense of superiority drives you mad because that's exactly what it means to be chosen by God. The, uh, Yaakov Inu says, Katointi Mikhail HaChasadim. Why Katointi? Why Katointi? The answer is because the more Yimin Lamaila, the more Smoy Lamata. The more Chesed Lamaila, the more revelation, the more you feel him, the more you feel your inadequacy as a separate creature. The more your ego melts away, the more the sense of narcissism, inflation, bloated arrogance, the disproportionate sense of self just melts away into oblivion as you become part of the cosmic or even super cosmic oneness. If there is concealment, now you can become a mountain. If there's revelation, now you become a valley. When there's harim, you become pious. Whenever there's tremendous revelation, now it's katointi. You don't find space for yourself as a separate being. Where, where are you going to fit it in? Where are you going to fit it in? Where are you going to put it? You don't even want it to exist. It becomes a burden. You just let it go away. You just want to become part of the truth that you're feeling. The larger truth you're feeling. That's why Moshe was of Mikola. Yes. That's why Moshe is of Mikola. Moshe didn't know he's more talented. You think Moshe didn't know that he knew more than most people or all people? He didn't know that God speaks to him and nobody else? Moshe was a tough person. He was a revolutionary. How could you revolt against a superpower and overthrow your own Zayda? Pyro was a step Zayda. He grew up by him. He grew up by him and then he over... People don't think about it. Moshe, when he spoke to Pyro, he was speaking to his stepfather. He grew up with this man. Moshe goes into Pyro. He goes... He knows him. <laughs> He grew up by him. And then he tells him, Send, let my people go. Pari looked at Moshe and said, Moshe was like my baby. I changed your pampers. Moshe was gone. Moshe knew who he was. He was a revolutionary. How can he be more humble? Fakert. Real humility is not about denial of, of, of talents or, or resources. It's in the presence of infinity, one becomes ashamed naturally with anything that protrudes outside of it. He has no place to put it. It's like there's an expression in Yiddish. Uh, um, uh, in other words, he, he he doesn't know where to like we say. He doesn't. You don't know where to place. You don't. You don't know where to place yourself, right? So sometimes it comes out of self consciousness, but here it's you don't know not where to place yourself. You don't know where to place the self. <laughs> you don't know where to place the sense of self. The sense of self is too cumbersome. And it, it, it melts. It melts. So the At of Echartonim Ekala Amen, what does it do? It essentially makes you feel unchosen. <laughs> the most unchosen. Right? So that's why anybody could become a Jew. It's not like anybody could become a Jew. If you want to convert, you can become a Jew. There's one condition. The condition is that you have to take a needle and pop the balloon. You have to pop the bubble. If you're ready to be in a conscious relationship with that which allows you to feel a sense of nothingness in terms of ego, then you can become a Jew. This, I think it's a very important point, though. This is not that God, you may uh, automatically create small of my size. That is the way you were supposed to respond. Yes. Words, yes, Abram yes, yes. chose to respond. To yes, 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 yes. But it's not the small automatic right, mirror right. images you make. Yes. This is right. the appropriate. Right? It's not a natural mirror image. This is the appropriate. Yes, response. yes. Avram chose... When, when one experiences Yemin, their response is in a sense of smile. Many problems of Kali Yisrael is because people don't act in the reciprocal way. God's expansive right. shkaya, so I'll be the chosen people. I'll right. act like I right. do what I want. Right, right, right. Also, the more little you become, the more you allow Hashem into... Uh, yeah. That's the opposite. We didn't get to that. That's the other way. Around. We started uh, one direction, but it goes the opposite to it. Why was the Torah not given in the beat? I'm here for Shabbos and we'll continue this on Monday. Be'ezer Hashem Blinader. It doesn't matter.
My wife says that I'm here. I don't know. He lost the passport. He trumped the TV. His wife said it. Why did the British not give him a in a valley as opposed to the smallest mountain? Not in a valley. Yeah. Yeah, so we learned that. We had the Mimers. Yeah, before Shavuos, yeah. Okay, it's it's In the archives. The archives. Yeah. It's tough as given. Wow. You could become a self hating Jew from what we learned today. <laughs> could be. I don't know why. You, you clarified it. It says in Shahashirim, at the end of Shahashirim, in Perik Ches, Posig Vov, Simeni Kachosam Alibecha, Kachosam Alzrayecha. Place me like a seal on your heart, like a seal on your arm. Ki aza kamavis ava kosha kasha ul kina rishafa rishve e shall have us yutke. Because love is as strong as death, jealousy is as uh, powerful or as deep as the grave. Its glow is a glow of fire, the flame of God. This is a very intense pasuk, I guess, like every pasuk in Shehashira. So the Zohar says, Simeni kachaisim alibecha kachaisim alzariecha refers to the two sets of pairs of tefillin. Tefillin shal yad and tefillin shal reish. Tefillin shal yad we put on the arm, and tefillin shal reish we place on the head, but the ritzuas flow down and uh, cover the heart. They go over the heart, the torso and the heart. So Simeni place me kachaisim like a seal, alibecha, on your heart. The kala tells the chasen, Place me like a seal on your heart, and kachosim al zoriacha like a seal on your arm. This is what the Gemara says in Shabbos in the Brachas. Tefillin the Mara Alma Mike Siv Bahu. The Gemara says, what does it say? Hashem puts on tefillin like He does every mitzvah, but what does it say in His tefillin? And for the Gemara, mi chamcha Yisrael goy echad ba'aretz. So place me in your tefillin. I want to be your chosim. Tefillin is called like a seal. A chaisam, which is basically your signature. So place me as a, a chaisam on your heart. I want to be your tefillin shalraish, which comes down on the heart. And I want to be your tefillin shalyad, which comes on your arm. As the Gemara says that in the tefillin of Hashem, it says, mm-hmm. That's the simeni, the two types of chaisam al rebech and chaisam al zreach. What this maimer in Akiv is trying to explain is, What's the diuk chaisim? Why a seal? Why a chaisim? And that's what he explained that a chaisim has the nature of being what's called chaisim hamishapech, that it becomes uh, reversed. They call it topsy turvy day in camp, you remember? It becomes reversed, it becomes metamorphosized, transformed in the opposite order. So when somebody takes his chaisim or her chaisim, the seal, like kings would always have a chaisim. In fact, Yehuda and Tamar, it's a big discussion with Yehuda and Tamar, one of the three things he gives Tamar is, she demands hachoisemes, his seal, and he wants to take his seal and imprint it, say, in, in shaiva, say, wax, which was a very common way for the monarchs to imprint their seals, or anybody to imprint their chaisem. So the nature is that if it's a chaisem boilet, if it's a protruding seal, so it creates an indentation in the shaiva, it becomes indented in the wax. So it's mishapech in the seal. It was on the outside, it protruded, and in the shaiva, it's recessed, it goes inwards. On the other hand of the chaisim, there's two types of seals. There's a seal that is engraved. Engraved, it's on the inside, it's in, 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 inward, recessed. So then when you put it on the shaiva, what happens? Boiling. It actually protrudes, it becomes boiled. And he says, ki b'tselem eloikim, asa sa'adam b'tselem eloikim. Tselem means an image. So what Pshat Kibbet? Tselem, Elikim, Asa, Sadam. Tselem is a tzura by lettuce. A tzura that is boilet. In the tselem of Elikim, he creates the Adam. What does, so what does this mean? You have Simeni, Kachosim, Alibecha, Kachosim, Alzrayach. Tfilin Sharaish is revealed. Tfilin Shalyad is mechus, is covered. Tfilin Sharaish, it says, Viro Chalame, Aritz Kishem Hashem, Nikra Alecha. V'yarim emeka, amar ebelazer, also the gemara in brachos, davav, elu tefillin she b'roish, the tefillin in the head. 
it's revealed. And tefillin shalyad is usually much more mechus, it's much more concealed, and it's halachically that way as well. Spiritually, this is the chaysim ali becha, this is the chaysim azreyecha. In tefillin shalyad, Hashem's chaysim is kevayachal revealed, exposed. The shins on the tefillin shalyad are also protruding from the tefillin. The tefillin shalyad is the chaysim that is shaykeya. It refers to concealment. And therefore, because of this, it has a reverse impact lamata on the human being. From the tefillin shorosh, which is the chaysem ha-boilet, comes what? When you imprint it in the person. B'tselem alikim asa esa adam. So the person experiences it in an inward fashion. Yimin lamayla creates smoyla lamata. Gilui lamayla creates Helam bitul lamata, and the other way around by the tefillin shalyad, where there is helam lamayla concealment, the chaysim is shakeya, it's recessed, it's not protruded. So what comes out by the recipient? What comes out is on the contrary something that uh, that protrudes. That's the connection to tefillin, the tefillin shalyad and the tefillin shalyad that you asked about. What is the havana here? So he says this is the pshat about Eretz Yisrael that it's Eretz Harim Ufkayis. Eretz Yisrael is a land of mountains, and it's a land of valleys. Of course, mountains represent that which grows. It's tall in its full splendor and stature and height. Not only protrudes from the earth, but grows sometimes to very uh, great. It reaches great and awesome heights. And the Pekoyas, on the contrary, is the valley, which represents a sense of uh, humility. It's recessed where the person actually descends. So the Har is Aliyah, and the and the Bika, the valley, is the concept of Yerid. So Eretz Yisrael is Eretz Harim of Koyas. It's both a land that experiences the Har, and it experiences the Bika. What is the difference? So the Baal HaTanya, the Alter Rebbe, explained in this Maimer, that it depends on the Chosim Lamayla, and it works both ways. It works, with, it works both Lamayla this way, and it works both Lamata, Lamata this way. The Ritsuas of Tfil and Sharaish come down on the lave, right? The Ritsuas have to come down and go over the lave, over the heart. There's a shear for the Ritsuas to come down from the Tfil and Sharaish. So they go, it's called the, it's, 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 it's the Talian Aliba. They hang, they're suspended, they're suspended over the heart. What is the Havana here? The Havana explains this. For there to be a chaysim boilet lamata, the protrusion above, it must come from the concealment lamayla. The more concealment, the more the divine energy is recessed, the more the human being's passion and creativity can emerge. Why is that? Because from smoil shalamayla, you're going to have yimin lamata. And that's the difference between Aish and Mayim, fire and water. Fire represents a person rising. Mayim is Yoyred Mimakam Gavaya, Lamakam Namuch. Har, therefore, he associates with fire. Bika, he associates with water. In each one, there's two types there's Harim and there's Pkoyas, there's two types of mountains, there's two types of valleys, as he said, there's two types of Ava. There's two types of Yira. There's Yud, there's He, there's Vav, there's He. You start off with Yira, you go to Ava, you go to a higher Ava, you go to a higher, a higher Yira. Since the Divine is infinite, so therefore, if it's fully exposed, if it's fully revealed, what it does is, it creates a sense of Katointi in the person. It creates a sense of humility in the person. Because in the presence of infinity, the person can't feel that they occupy a space, their own space. So it creates a sense of bika, a sense of humility, a sense of bittal. On the contrary, 
if it's smoila myla, if the chaisim is concealed, if it's if it's held back, if it's contained, if it's withdrawn, if it's withdrawn, the concept of gvura, the concept of tzimtzum, then it allows for the mountain below. So that's where it gets reversed. The same is true the other way around. When the person is in a state of gilui from himself, the sarusa, the la'ela that it's created, is the reverse. A chaisim shaykeya. From our boilet comes a chaisim shaykeya. Just like Lamaila, from Harim comes Bakayas. From his Harim comes our Bakayas. That's Eretz Harim of Kayas. It's also the other way around. From our Harim come his Bakayas. When the person asserts themselves in a good way, spiritually asserts themselves, it creates Lamaila. They could get a recipro- what What's reciprocated? What's reciprocated is Harusa de Laela of a Bika, of a valley. On the other hand, when the Sarusa de Lasata is what? Is a Chosim Shaykeya, not a Chosim Boilet. When the Sarusa de Lasata is a Chosim Boilet, so what's Nimshech Momayla? A Chosim Shaykeya. When the Sarusa de Lasata is a Chosim Shaykeya, a Chosim of Bittol, then the Sarusa de Laela is a Chosim Boilet. Complete revelation without any garments that eclipse it, without any V'lo Yikonef Oid Meirecha V'hoyu Einecha Royus es meirecha, because in the process of the human being's uh, loss of ego, loss of identity, even spiritual identity, he can experience the full intense revelation of the divine without any compromise, the full chais and boilet, exactly the reverse of his experience. So it works both ways, sai when it starts lamaila and sai when it starts lamata. From harim become kayas, and from Koyas become Harim. From Harim Lamaila become Koyas Lamata. From Koyas Lamata Lamaila become Harim Lamata. From Harim Lamata become Koyas Lamaila. And from a Bika Lamata becomes a Har Lamaila. Always a Choysem Hamisapech Bitzelem Eleikim Asa Asa Adam Simeni Kechoysem Al Yibecha and Kechoysem Al Zoryacha Tfilin Shalyad and Tfilin Sharash. If our service below is a good thing when we're acting as Harim. So why would we want to experience the Rebbe Shalom as a, as a Shekua, as a, as a Bika? I mean, if, if we're doing something good with our creativity, why do we want the Rebbe Shalom experience to be one of... Right. Um, I don't think it's what we want. In other words, I think it's, it's what we access. The Sarusa de la Eila that comes from the Sarusa de la Sata means what we access. Through the human being's sense of expression, they can access the valley of the divine. Through the human being's sense of lack, non-expression, of uh, bittel, one can access the full expression of the divine. Huh? Are you, are you so, yeah. so we said last week about Anochi Yochavar Eifer is not quite the way he said it last week. It wasn't just the Rabbani Shalom's expansion that is created on Avram's Anochi Yochavar Eifer. Because Avram had this meet of Anochi Yochavar Eifer, he was fakered, enabled, therefore, to experience the Rebbe Shalom's experience. Yes, both ways. You're right. It goes both ways. Yeah. It goes both ways. What do you want to ask? I don't know if, if are you speaking in terms of, because you're saying that when a, a person expresses himself spiritually, he asserts himself in a spiritual, not in an egotistical Yeah, not a, no, we're not talking about egotistical. We're talking about a spiritual, right. spiritual endeavor, yeah. I mean, Holy endeavor. Usually when a person gets to that point, I mean, from, a, from a, let's say, a creative, a, crea- a creative person can say that when they experience that, that intense spiritual sort of connection, then they can truly, you know, express themselves and assert themselves. It seems that when they, when they have that whatever inspiration, it's sort of the recognition of, of the divine within them, and therefore they assert themselves, but not as themselves. I'll explain a little more. Let me explain a little more what it means. Uh, try to bring it down also in a practical way. In every person's avoida, there's two paths or there's two aspects, and nobody is freed from either. In other words, both are part of life. We'll put them in the words of, uh, I'll put it in a, a, a different expression, but it'll bring, it'll bring us to the same point. There's an expression in Zoya, Parshas Truma, Kadiskafi Sitra Achir Estalik Ikara de Kuchabricha Bakul Alma. When Sitra Acher is subdued, the glory of Hashem departs and is, expre- is expressed in all of the worlds. The expression in Zayir is Kadiskafi Sitra Achir. 
because there's two paths in Avodah Hashem. One we would call a skafia, one we would call a sapcha. Subjugation, transformation. One in which you have to subdue yourself somewhat, or significantly. And watch, you don't have to subdue yourself. You have to actually cultivate yourself. You transform yourself. In every person's avoid, like in any relationship, there's two phases, there's two aspects. It's usually different times. depends on a lot of different factors. But we all have both experiences. One is when I am in tune with the relationship. I am present fully. I am there. I don't have to challenge myself. I don't have to discipline myself. I don't have to harness myself. On the contrary, I am a mountain. I'm not a valley. There's moments in life when you are a mountain, and there's moments in life when you're a valley. Moments in mountain life when you're a mountain means you're not only expressive, but you're fully expressive. Your heights, your potentials have reached their greatest heights. You become a mountain, literally like a mountain. In other words, you're in full growth, in full splendor, metaphorically speaking, symbolically speaking. A bika means the other way around. You actually have to create a... a, a there's a cavity, there's a, there's a slope that goes downwards, and that's what the person is experiencing. So it's a very opposite, it's a very opposite emotion, it's a very opposite experience. Harim, a state of full expansiveness. Bika is what we'd call in English a downer. Literally a downer. And sometimes you feel just like, what, what are you creating? You're creating empty space. Right. But here is the paradox. Here is the paradox. A har doesn't have empty space to accept something. On the contrary, it fills up the empty space. It grows into the empty space. It occupies the space. A bika, in this tremendous void, you create what's called in halacha, a clay kibble, a receptacle, an openness that something could fill the valley. Because you have re- you, you experiencing a recession, literally, I don't mean economically, but that concept, the recession, you create an indentation, a descent into the bika. the bika creates a receptacle, an openness. Let's take this one step further. When we speak about Kevayachal Hashem, when we speak about it, even though there's no real distinction, but in our terminology there's a distinction, you could talk about it from two perspectives. We could talk about God as a reality, a reality that one can relate to on some level, and then there is God as a reality that completely, it's a reality, but it transcends any type of vocabulary that a person could speak of beyond our identity. Or uh, there's an expression of Reb Tzadik HaKayin of Lublin in the Sefer Tzitka Satzadik, he says, when you talk about Hashem, you could speak about Hashem as a yesh, and you could speak about Hashem as an ayin. Yesh means something, ayin means nothing. doesn't mean you speak of him as ayin, that it's nothing, nothing in the sense of nothing exists, but ayin in the sense that you cannot define it in any, any way. Yesh you can define, because it's something. Ayin, nothingness, has a great advantage. You can't define it. There's no way you can define it. So here is now the distinction between in Avedis Ha'at, in Avedis Hashem, between a person being a mountain or a person being a valley. On one hand, in a relationship, it's always more geschmack. It's always more delightful when you're fully present, when you're fully agreeable, when you're fully enthusiastically involved, because the passion is there, the personality is there. That's true. When a person is experiencing a moment of a bika, a moment of a valley, a moment of descent, where they just feel empty, here it's so difficult, it's so painful. But there's also another side to it. And that is, those are the moments when you get to touch something that completely transcends yourself. Those are the moments that are the prerequisite of transformation. I'll quote again Reb Tzaddik in very abstract language. He says as follows. Yesh is fixed. From a yesh you'll never have new things. Ayin is nothing. The good thing about nothing is that from nothing could come a new something. 
when you relate to reality as yesh, it's geshmak, because you have something to hold on to, but there's nothing new. When you relate to the ayin, to the sense of nothingness, from here, new birth emerges. There's rebirth, there's reality. Since some of you are confused and you don't know where I'm getting at, so we'll make this very practical and psychological. Your typhus? Huh? No, that's Iskafia. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me, let me, huh? This one, why does the bika have to be a bad thing? Why can't it be intentional? No, not bad at all. Not bad. It, but you can create a bika to accept. I mean, that's, that's true. That's true. 100%. To, uh, that's the point. That's the point. So it's not really like a recession or a downer. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a creating it's a, a space for something to fill. Yeah, you can create a down to build. You can create a space. But my point is, even if somebody experiences a downer, it can also be positive. that can also become positive. That's the point. But you're right. There's no need to experience a downer. You create that experience of a downer. You have moments in life when life is agreeable with you. Like in a relationship. You have moments that a relationship is very powerful. It's intense. It's beautiful. It's passionate, loving, romantic, full of affection. Any type of relationship I'm talking about. Of course, a husband and a wife. But really, all types of relationships. Each one in its genre and, you know, what, what, what a good relationship means in that area, whether it's parents and children, whether it's close friends, whether it's teacher and students, of course, a husband and a wife, uh, etc., etc., uh, an employer, an employee, all types of relationships, of course, everyone according to its gedorim, its, its parameters. Then you have a moment in a relationship that there's, there's a challenge, there's, there's a sense of emptiness, there's a sense of bika, it's a sense where, where I'm not feeling my fullness of self. What happens at such moments? Take it in our relationship with Hashem. You have moments that a person is a, in a geschmack. They feel like serving God. But what happens when you're in a moment that all you need is a skafia? You basically have to subdue yourself. You have to say no to yourself. If a person, for example, has a tremendous craving to something that's immoral, and every one of us knows that in the best of situations, the best of people, the most noble of people, 3 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock midnight, 12 o'clock midday, something overtakes you, a thought, a dream, a fantasy, an emotion, an experience, something you see, something you hear, something internal, and you now have to deal with a tremendous craving, and you know that if you follow that craving, it's going to be destructive for you. It may destroy you, destroy your marriage, destroy your family. Every person knows what I'm talking about. Or at least, if you're not, you're very lucky. If you do, you know what I'm talking about. If not, this is much better. No need to Google this to find out. <laughs> right. What happens at such a moment? A person then can't feel like a mountain. A person then has to say no to themselves. What do they mean no to themselves? They have to empty themselves out. They have to then become a beaker, so to speak. They have to have what's simply called yira and bittel. Bittel means I have to nullify myself. Nullify myself doesn't mean I have to destroy myself, but it means I have to challenge myself. I have to empty myself out and say, despite of who you think you are, this is not for you. This is, here assertion is not what's going to help you. Here you have to negate through something that you're negating. You're drilling, so to speak, a hole in yourself. You're emptying yourself out and you're placing yourself in a very humble state and it can be very frustrating. So here, this mimer is telling us something very, not only comforting, but very powerful. Where do you touch God in a deeper way? Natural, conventional thinking would be, fakert, when there's a geschmack, when you're a mountain, ah, now you grasp God. Alter Rebbe says, no, 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 no. When you're a chosem boilet, when you're a yesh, a good yesh, we're not talking about an egotistical, gluttonous, narcissistic yesh. About a good yesh, a geshmak yesh. You're experiencing what he says here an esh, a fire. It's not a bad thing, it's a wonderful thing. It's an esh, it's a fire. He says, Rishafer, Rishfa yesh, I'll have his yud kid. There's a fire, it's a brent. He's a mountain, he's aspiring. A fire dances, a fire soars, a fire tries to kiss heaven. But what aspect of a lakus do you access? You access the aspect of a lakus that's a chaisem boilet. You understand? You're protrusion reaches in heaven something that's recessed simply put you're accessing godliness that your heart can wrap itself around that's why you have a geschmack this is a relationship that i get i like you i like you 
I like you is a beautiful thing, but it also means that I'm only grasping the you that I get. You understand? I like you means I like you. So how much of you am I getting? I'm getting the you that I like. And by definition, that means that the you is not fully revealed. Because if the you was fully revealed, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. this is too much. This is too much. I'm getting a glimmer. I'm getting, and this is even true between people. Somebody told me once, what's the definition of a nudnik? The meaning is you ask him how he is, and he actually st- tells you. He tells you, you know, you meet somebody, what's Herzig? How you doing? Baruch Hashem. Next. You just lost your house. You just lost this. You just lost that. Somebody, mama starts telling you how they're doing. Thank you for asking. Right? <laughs> so somebody says, you know, I didn't mean to really ask you how you're doing. I just meant to be nice. You're supposed to say, Baruch Hashem, fine, and move on. What We don't want to hear the full story. It's, a t- it's intense. It's intense. Okay, so that's a little cynical. But the point in life is true. We don't love, o- it's very hard to love other people. We love our version of other people. We have a version. We have a certain... Now, that version may be true. We're not talking about a delusional man. But it's that which I'm comfortable with. Now I have the bika. What's the bika? The bika is the opposite. The bika is like, I can't make peace with you. There's something here that's a big problem. You know why? Because you're actually getting more of the other person, not less. Because you're getting more of the other person, it's challenging you. It's emptying you out. It's creating a sense of loss in you. But you know what happens? If you stick it through, if you stick it through, you're going to open yourself up to layers, to horizons, to awarenesses that you wouldn't be able to experience. So again, to quote the Psodic, if you are in a good place, you're in a state of yesh, you capture God as a yesh. There's no new birth from yesh. It's fixed. Your God is fixed. Or the words here is your God is more concealed. If you're in a state of ayin, of bika, of bittel, now you can define, you can't define God. So you could relate to the nothingness of God. Meaning to the God that transcends any definition or parameter. And from there, new things emerge. Or to, as he puts it here, from the chaysim shaykeya, you access the chaysim boilet v'lo yikonef oid meirecha v'hoyu einecha royeis es meirecha gilu oirin sav b'li levushim amastirim. Why? Because when I say no to myself, I can access the no of reality. I know, I know grammatically that didn't work. When I say no to myself, I can access the, the, in Yiddish it works. When you say no to yourself, you can access, in Elikus, you have the Ye of Elikus, and you have the Nisht of Elikus. The Ye of Elikus is that which we know. The Nisht of Elikus is that which we don't know. That which is too deep to know that which is beyond, that which transcends. So when you relate to your own yes, you capture ultimately that yes also. When you say no to yourself, in other words, you transcend identity, so then you access the divine that is beyond identity. So you have the divine energy that comes into vessels, that comes into Caleb, that shrinks and limits itself into structure. In other words, it's symptom, it's restricted. Or in other words, it's a chaysim shaykeya. It's an indented energy. It's withdrawn. It's concealed. So when I relate to my structure and my identity, when my identity affirms God's reality, what am I relating to? God, the way He's within structure. When my structure doesn't affirm it, in other words, when I have to say no to my structure, because my identity does not make peace with it, I have to empty myself out from myself and create a bika. Now what do I touch? Now what do I access? Now I access also the divine that is beyond identity, beyond structure. The Ein Soif in its full, full intensity. So here you have a fascinating paradox. The Mezrit Shemagid put it in four words. Allah la kevesh ufana la soiviv. You know what he touched? Hell. Allah la kevesh. Every morning is Alma Kaiman, right? Allah la kevesh ufana la soiviv. In Hashem, there's memale kalalmin and soiviv. Memale, 
structure. God in structure. Soiviv, infinite, transcendent. Olola kevish. When somebody has to be a kivish as Yitzra, ufonola soiviv, he gets straight to soiviv kalalman. When a person doesn't have to be kivish himself, when his identity is maskim, it's great. It's not soiviv. I relate to God. In other words, my eye relates to the divine that fills my eye, to the divine that my eye can relate to. In other words, to the divine that is more concealed and structured and limited, and that's why I can appreciate it. When I have a moment that I'm struggling, and I don't agree with it, and what do I have to I have to look in the mirror and say, despite you, you'll fight for truth, despite your addiction, despite your craving, despite your hallucinations, despite your tivus, you're going to do the right thing, you negate identity. In that process, you touch the divine that's beyond identity. Allah la kevish, your oil to a state of kevish. Ufanala soiviv, you hit soiviv. Not mamale. In other words, your bika meets God's mountains. Your bika meets a gili oil and sov that's much deeper. And that's why the growth that you experience from such a moment is infinitely greater than the growth that you experience just from a peaceful, ongoing, positive relationship. It says, poured in water into the wine, right? And Parshish told us Yitzchak summons Esav to give him the brachas. Rivka dresses up Yaakov like Esav, gives him food from the two goats that she prepared for Yitzchak a lavish meal, a lavish feast to bring to Yitzchak. And the Pasuk says, Vayave loy yayin vayesht. On the word loy, there's a mercha chfula, one of the few mercha chfulas in the whole Chumash. Vayave loy yayin vayesht. What's the loy? What's the mercha? So it says in Zohar, that's what he brings here, that Arami Yaakov mayim liyayin. Yaakov poured in water into the wine. So, that's the Mercha Chfula. In other words, Vayave Loid was a double, a double drink, because it was a mixture of wine and water. So, Pashtus, what's the point? Okay, he wanted to dilute the wine. They used to always dilute the wine, because the wine was too strong. It's called Mizugayay and Limzugayay. And it's in Gemara, you have many times, they had to be Mamazik, they had to dilute the wine. But here the Baratani says it was Lahamshit Bracha El Yonah Yosef. It was to access a deeper Bracha from... Yitzchak. Why? Because there's a difference between what wine represents and what water represents. What's the difference between what wine represents and what water represents? So let's see. This is going to be expressed in the difference between two avoidus in the Beis Hamikdash. Nisuch Hamayim versus Nisuch Hayayim. And here we need a little introduction of the halachic facts. Every single day when they brought the Karbonus in the Beis Hamikdash, Many of the Karbanas had what's called Nisachim, Nischeyayin, wine libations. Like we say in all the Musafs that we daven, Oviyayim HaShabbos Shnei Chvasim B'nei Shana Tmimim, Ushnei Yisoyreinim, Soylus Minchabul of Hashem and Oylus Shabbos B'Rabbate, Oylus Atamid, Vi Niska. Or Yamtif, we speak about O Nisachayim, Vi Niskay, with the Karbanas Tzibur, the communal Karbanas that they used to bring every morning, and Shabbos, Yamtif, Rishchaydish, holidays. They also used to bring wine libations. The Kayan would go up to the Mizbeach, there was a special uh, a barrel, special wine, and they would pour the wine. That was part of the daily avoid in the Beis HaMikdash. However, for eight days, that avoid had changed. And that was, I mean, seven days for Sukkot, Nisuch HaMayim, the libation of water. Libation of water was that in the morning, after they offered the carbon Tamar Shel Shachar, the Kayan would go up, and it was one would pour wine, but there was also simultaneously a sefal, a, 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 a goblet, a flask of gold with water that was also poured on the Mizbeach. There was a cavity for the wine, there was a, a cavity for the water, and it would go down, there was a hollow channel, canal through the Mizbeach. It went down all the way down to the, to the shittin, underground uh, uh, caves and openings in Yerushalayim <laughs> under the Temple Mount, under the Harabayas. And we know that Simcha's Beis HaSheyeva 
was all associated around the pouring of the water. Basically, they used to dance, it's called Simcha's Beis HaSheva, which means the Simcha of base of the house, HaSheva, of drawing. The Pasuk says in Yeshaya, we say it, Mitzvah Yishabes, or Sha'aftem, Mayim Besasen, Mimayne Yishu. Draw water with joy, and it's referring to the fact that Sukkot, Mitzvah Yomtev, they used to make a festivity, they would dance all night, by the, the courtyard of the Beis HaMikdash, the Mishnah and the Gemara in Sukkah describes in detail the tremendous Simcha, the greatest of the Tanoim would stand and juggle. It was amazing. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, the president, the Nasi of the Sanhedrin, you have to understand. This was the God Ladar was standing and juggling eight torches or 16 torches. Understand what happened there. The Gedolei Tanoim were dancing all night with music. The, 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 the Gemara says, Misha Leira Simcha, Sashev Leira Simcha, Minyam. If you didn't see that Simcha, you never saw Simcha. What was it for? What was the climax of it? So Chazal say, when it came dawn break, they stopped dancing, they blew shoifer, and they made a march down to the Shiloyach Spring, which you could go visit till today, amazing. And you, they took water from the Shiloyach Spring, and they brought it back, and after sunrise, they offered the carbon tumid, and they poured the water on the Mizbech. Now the question is, it's interesting, between water and wine, which one is more associated with Simcha? <laughs> Wine or water, so everybody knows. Nobody ever got drunk from drinking water. Nobody ever started to drink, said, oh, I had a drink of water, let's dance. Or nobody ever proposed on a cup of water. You know, here's a cup of water to honor our, uh, our, uh, our engagement. Wine is the, the whole union of wine is simcha. Yayin yis, I'll be told that way. Yayin yisamach levav enosh. The great simchas of Yidin are always associated with wine, sometimes too much wine, but... But wine, whether it's Shabbos, Yom Tif, marriage, bris milah, wherever we can, wherever we have a simcha, we hakarayim, a cup of wine. Ein oimrim shira, the Gemara says, elal hayayin, we say shira on yayin. But suddenly, it's interesting, they poured wine every day, it was not a gewalt. On Sukkot, once a year, they poured water, and they danced each night, a whole night. The Gemara says that they didn't sleep, like ta'am nutam shina, they didn't sleep. They would sleep on each other's shoulders dancing. So you can understand the matzav. Why all as a hachana to prepare for the water, the pouring of the water? It's very strange. So this is what the Balatanya is going to explain. And this is why Yaakov took the wine and he poured water into the wine. He wanted to have not only wine, but also water. So the pshat is, let's see inside. You see the line starts Mayim. I mean, we'll repeat. I learned, I think, these few lines, but we'll repeat. I think we just learned this line. Yaakov poured water into the wine to access a deeper brach, a higher brach. This is Pshat. He's going to explain it in a moment. It says in Parshas Ekev about Eretz Yisrael. What's the gathered of Eretz Yisrael? Eretz Harim of Koyas. It's a land of mountains and valleys. And the whole Maimah came to explain what that means, spiritually speaking, in Avodah Hashem. There's moments of a harem when a person is like a mountain, and there's moments when a person is like a valley. There's moments of a tremendous sense of growth, expansiveness, yearning. As he says, the age that wants to go upwards, and the soul that wants to go upwards... It wants to grow higher and higher. It's what we call Ratsui. It's the Avraham Shekarai Har. It's that Pchin of Avraham Shekarai Har. Avraham called it, called it a, a, a mountain. And Harim Lashin Rab. There's different types of Ava. And then there is the Bika, which represents a sense of Yira, a sense of humility, a sense of Bittal, a sense of Mesim Atzmai Kishirai. Right after that, the Pasuk says, Limtar Hashamayim Tishta Mayim. To the rain of heaven, you drink water. Limtar hashamayim tishtamayim. So he says, "V'zeu limtar hashamayim tishtamayim." Ka'adam hashoyse lachaveda sheyachzer v'yishtaloi. Like a man who pours a drink to his friend, I pour to you, and you reciprocate. You pour back to me. So limtar hashamayim tishtamayim. It goes both ways. Limitar. It doesn't say mimtar hashamayim tishtamayim. It goes both ways. Pirush. What does this mean? 
שזהו הלוס מיין נוקבין להמשך מיין דוכלין הנקרא מתאר השמיים. He asked in the beginning, על פי דיקטוק, על פי גרמר, should have said, מי מתאר השמיים תשתמיים? He says, no. It starts off with halos mayin nukvin, the elevation of feminine waters, to bring forth masculine waters, which is like we learned before in Tazria, there's man and there's mad. Feminine waters represents the arousal of the feminine, of the woman, of the bride, of Knesset Yisrael. Masculine waters means the flow, the spiritual orgasmic inspiration that comes from above, from the mashpia, from the chasen, from HaKadosh Baruch. The whole story of life is a dance. It's a dance. It's a relationship between the two. Between the whole Shir Hashirim is based on this. Ani Doidi and this Doidi Li. And they run from each other and they get close to each other and they run back from each other. Reb Shloime Ibn Gabiru was one of the greatest poets of Jewish history in Spain. He has a poem and he says, I run from you towards you. I run from you towards you. In other words, I'm running away from you, but really I'm also running closer to you. Which is a very profound insight in life. Sometimes a person is running away, but they're really running closer, they just don't know it yet. So, there is the process of mayin nukvin and of mayin duchrin. Limtar mayim. In order to get the rain from heaven, it first starts, you give, tishtamayim. Kadam hashay I give you and you give me. It's the Mayan Nukvin, it's the arousal from below to bring forth the inspiration from above. This may be the deeper insight into the libations of water throughout the entire seven days of Sukkot in the Beis HaMikdash. The pouring of wine every single morning and every single afternoon in the Beis HaMikdash is of course joy. But wine represents the chaisem boilet. It's the seal that protrudes below. Yayin represents the joy of the soul in its tremendous love to Hashem. And that's why what used to happen right when they poured the wine on the altar, a concert would follow. It's hard for us to imagine, but every single day, there was a huge, twice a day, there was a huge concerto in the Beis HaMikdash. You, I, I say the word concerto, you can have 120 vocalists. This wasn't two Levium standing and, and gargling, you know, some, uh, some Rosenblatt or, or Kasavitsky or something. You can have 120 vocalists in the Beis HaMikdash, talented, talented Levium, and even others, if they were Meyuchasim, you can even have Yisraelim, with instruments, dozens of dozens, or dozens of <coughs> instruments, Mamash of Philharmonic, uh, uh, it was, I don't know what it was called, I guess the Beis HaMikdash Philharmonic Orchestra, but it was every single day when they poured the one. Well, so it wasn't Stamapis, this was a moment of tremendous inspiration. It was Simchas HaNefesh Ba'avarabah, and that's associated by the wine. The wine poured, and they broke out in song and in music, which was an expression of, of yearning, of love, of, of, of spiritual romance, of celebration. Nisu HaMayim, water is something very different. You can't compare water to wine. Nisuch ha-mayim hu b'chines chachma. Koyach ma. B'chines bitl. Shoh b'chines choysim shaykeya shemil mata. Mayim is a very different experience than yayin. It's back to the choysim boilet versus the choysim shaykeya. The protruded seal or the indented, the recessed choysim, the recessed We have it even in halacha. What's the difference between wine and water? The Mishnah says in Baruchas, ha-choysim mayim l'tzmoi, Somebody who drinks water when he's thirsty, he makes shakal nibidvari, and that's important. If you drink apple juice, orange juice, mango juice, grape juice, of course, wine, even if you're not thirsty, there's birchas hanen and you make a brach. With water, that's not the case. Water is considered in halacha something that's tasteless, unless you're thirsty. If you're thirsty, we know there's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing on a hot summer day, 99 degrees, to come in and get a cup of water. Hopefully it's not lukewarm. There's nothing as bad as a lukewarm cup of water on a hot day. But a cold cup of water, Gaval. But the truth is, when somebody is thirsty, because the hana of water comes from thirst. And even in Allah, there's a Mishnah, Bakol Ma'arvin, Chutzmin Hamayim, Umin Hamelach. You make an Eriv, 
you can't use water and salt. The Rambam says these are things that are Mishnayis, that are things that are tasteless. You don't have, you don't make a meal on salt. You put salt, salts on the salad. You don't make and mayim. Also, mayim is not considered a drink of hana unless you're thirsty. What does this represent spiritually? It's the exact opposite of wine, because you're dealing here with two different experiences. One is an experience of yesh of Hana, of Tainug, of Simcha, of Chosim Boilet. And one is an experience of, of Bittel, of Chosim Shekeya. And the Tainug of water is only when a person is thirsty. What does this mean in a person's life? The difference between Yayin and Mayim is the difference between somebody appreciating something fully and somebody who is dedicated to something, even if at this moment he or she may not be in the mood and may not appreciate it. That's what Mayim represents. Mayim represents, a, 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 on one hand, it seems inferior to wine, because in wine there's pleasure, in wine there's joy, in wine there's flavor. A wine, you have wine kind of connoisseurs, I don't know if you have water connoisseurs, I don't think. You have wine connoisseurs, they know how to take a cup of wine and look at it for 20 minutes and explain to you how it was made and where it came from, and the color and the scent and the flavor and the taste. All the wine experts, they could sit, they could sit their whole life and explain to you and analyze wine. It's a whole, it's a whole mahalach. With water, <laughs> with water, maybe there's more to water than wine, I don't know. But even though a drop of water has uh, sectillion atoms, that's, uh, what, that's one followed by, I don't know, 21 zeros or so, a drop of water, there's a lot going on in water. But what we're experiencing of water is simplicity. What is this in Avodah Hashem? Yayin is the experience of Bina. And, yayin, and Mayim, he says, is the experience of Chachma. What's Chachma? Chachma, he says, is Koyach Ma. Two words. Koyach Ma means the Koyach of what? What means the Koyach of what? It's the Koyach to say what? What's the Koyach to say? Well, that's a very deep Koyach. The deepest Koyach in a person is to say what? I don't know. <laughs> what? Ma. To ask the question, Ma. What? In other words, I don't know. Usually, I know, we know everything. To be able to really, genuinely open yourself up to something that may completely transcend you. That is, koyach, to say ma, memhe, that's chachma. Before bina, bina is when you master a theme, when you master a concept, you internalize it, you get it. Chachma, you don't get it yet. Chachma, you're opening yourself up, you know that you don't get it. And you're frustrated by it. And therefore, you're opening yourself up to a higher truth. There's never the geshmak and the tainuk that exists in yayin. Because in yayin, you mastered it. In mayim, it masters you. And for it to master you, you have to create an empty space. That's the valley. So in Avodah Hashem, there's moments of choysem boilet. When I'm in, I'm here, I got it. It's a wine experience. A water experience means it's not an experience at all. I'm opening myself up to the fact that I can't experience something because it's beyond me. That's why he said the chaysim shaykeya, the, the yayin reaches, the mayim reaches a deeper place in the source because I can't experience it. I can't wrap myself around it. And that's really the concept of Kabbalah's oil malchus shamayim. What's Kabbalah's oil malchus shamayim? It means that truth is not always dependent on my experience of it. You cannot limit truth to your moods and to your experience. Because if you do, your truth is a very, very small truth. It's a very narrow truth. Kabbalah's oil malcha shamaya means that I understand that sometimes there's a truth that eludes me. It transcends my moods, it transcends my experiences, but it's still true. What it needs is, I have to open myself to it, I have to commit to it. That's why it says... When you're thirsty, you make a bracha on Mayim Shakal Niyabidvar. Because Mayim quenches thirst, unlike Yayin. When you're thirsty for truth, now you go to the water. Because water will take you to a place that wine doesn't take you. And in a paradoxical way, the greatest simcha by Klal Yisrael came from Nisuch HaMayim, not from Nisuch HaYayin. And the Tzdukim would not accept this. Nisuch HaMayim, the Sadducees would not accept. The Mishnah says in Masech Tesukadav Memches that there was a Sadducee from Josephus, we know who he was, Alexander Yanai, Alexander Janius in his Greek name, who was a grandson of the original Chashmanoyim. 
and he really turned uh, turned around during his life, and he did not believe in Nisuch Hamayim. Why? Because it doesn't say clearly in Chumash. It's a halacha l'moshe misinai. There are hints in Chumash, the Gemara and Tainus, but it doesn't say clearly. So what would they do? They would take the water, and instead of pouring it on the altar, they would pour it down on the floor, on their feet. That's why they used to tell the Menasech, Hag beyotcha, lift up your hands, we want to see where the water is going, if it's going on the Mizbeach, because they would lower it, and nobody would see. And he once poured it on his feet, and what did they do? Instinctively, there were 6,000 Jews by the Beis HaMikdash, they pelted the man with a sreigim. It's a Mishnah Masech Tesukah. The mission doesn't say the end of the story. Josephus tells the end of the story. The guy made a sh- the guy slaughtered out. He slaughtered. He slaughtered the whole crowd on the Harabayas on Sukkot. Alexander Yane. The Mishnah doesn't say the end of the story, because the Mishnah is, is trying to bring out the halacha. It's, it's a horrific story, but that's what they did. They pelted him with a sroigim. They didn't believe in Nisachai Mayim, only in Nisachai Yain. What's the spiritual idea? that Stukim had a philosophy of Judaism. The philosophy of Judaism was that Nisach Mayim they would not accept. It wasn't just a detail about Nisach Mayim. It was a concept. The concept that they, wouldn't, that they would not accept was everybody interprets things as they want to interpret it. The concept of Mesoira, Halacha Lomayshu Misinai, Teirah Shabbat Peh, they reject it. So Nisach Mayim which represents the commitment of Chachma that's beyond Binah, the valley that is deeper than the mountain, this they rejected. The greatest simcha comes from mayim, not from yayim. Why? Because real joy in life comes from opening yourself up to that which transcends you. To allow yourself to experience infinity. And you can only allow yourself to experience infinity is if you're ready to make a dent. If you're ready to create kayachma. So the har is a beautiful experience. But the bika reaches deeper than the heart. So when Yaakov wants to get the bracha from Yitzchak, and what type of bracha does he want to get? He wants to get, and here we have to be mashlam from another mimer of the Balatanya to give a little Taisvah's beer. Why did Rivka not tell her husband to give the brachas to Yaakov? Why did she have to deceive her husband? Why the need for it? It's not like the others were not listening to the Imahis. Whatever the Imahis said, the others did. Vaharaya, Yitzchak, Rivka saw her own mother-in-law. She didn't have to go far. They had a debate. Avram wanted Yishmael in the house. Sarah didn't want Yishmael in the house. Avram asked Hashem, and Hashem gave one answer. And the answer remains a timeless commandment to every <laughs> Jewish husband. Ad bias goyal tzedek, and even after that, koil asher toimer elecha Sarah, shma bekoilam. And note, the Rebbeinu Shlelem didn't say, in this instance, Sarah is right. That's not what he said. He said, whatever Sarah says is right by definition. Shma Bekoila. Whatever Sarah says, you listen to her. No. So Rivka could have come to Yitzchak and say to Yitzchak, you're a Tayyid Yid, you're a Halik Yid, but you really don't know Esav. Esav is a shtickle rotten apple. And Yitzchak would say, can be. You have, you have a direct connection. Ask God. Ask God. What would Hashem say? Of course Rivka is right. When is the woman not right? Whoever heard that the woman is not Right? Right? She didn't, why didn't she do that? She had to deceive. So the Balatanya says in the Kutatayr and Parches Vizayis HaBracha, something very deep, and he says that she wanted that the brachas should come from the unconscious self of Yitzchak. They shouldn't come from his conscious self, they should come from his unconscious self. They should come from a place that's Lamaila Min Hadas. And that's why you had to put water into the wine. Because Mayim versus Yayin is, Yayin represents something that is fully integrated, Mayim represents something that's more transcendent. That's why it's tasteless. It's tasteless not because it has no taste. It's tasteless because its taste transcends our taste buds. We don't have a taste in it because it has a power to it that is not fully integrated. But if you're thirsty for truth, you drink water. And then you make a bracha. Somebody who's a tzame, somebody who's a tzame who wants to touch transcendence, who wants to touch, as he says here, beyond levushim. This is through the chaisim. This is through the chaisim boilet. This is through the bittel. This is through the averabe, the yire, the yire law. This is you lose yourself in God. You don't find yourself. Finding yourself is awesome. That's the mountain. 
Eretz Yisrael, to be in Eretz Yisrael, you have two experiences. There's the moment when you're a mountain, and there's the moment when you are a valley, and one brings the other. So Yaakov brought water into the wine. He was mamshech mayim into mayim, he says, to bring out a deeper, a deeper bracha. This also was consistent, I think I told you once, a beautiful vart from the Chidush Harim. Really a fascinating vart that a person, uh, uh, the ge- first Ger Rebbe, living in the 1800s, living in the Chidush Harim, passed away, Tafre Chavav, 1866. He should say this today, that somebody should say it, uh, say it then, is a Chidush Dover. Chidush Harim, you know Chidush Harim, Reb Itcha Meir, Reb Itcha Meir Rottenberg was the first Ger Rebbe, Reb Yitzchak Meir, he was a student of the Kotzke Rebbe. When the Kotzke Rebbe passed away, he took over. He moved to Ger, which is not far from Warsaw. So the Chidushi Harim was a great spiritual giant. Personally, a tragic life, one of the most tragic lives a person can imagine. I'm not going to get into it right now. But the Chidushi Harim says as follows, I saw once in Parshas told us. He says, why did Rivka deceive her husband Yitzchak? And his answer is this she could have told Yitzchak to give the bracha to Yaakov, and he would have said, yes, dear, yes, Rivka, no question, as I said before. What would have happened then? She would have told Yaakov, Yaakov, your father wants to bless you. What would Yaakov do? First thing is he would go to the mikveh. Second thing is he would put on a gartel, a kapota, a streimel. He would probably learn for six, seven hours. He would make a chonus. He would do everything, and he would go into his father with the chilu, rechimu, with yira, and avar, tremendous awe to get the brachas. And Yitzchak would say, v'yitam l'chalakim. And everything would be beautiful and dandy and uplifted. But Rivka said, no, no, no. It can't happen that way. Why? The Yiddish mama was thinking not about the short term. She was thinking about long term. Long term, I don't mean 100 years. Long term, I mean 3,000 years. 4,000 years. Or today would be 3,600 years approximately. What was she thinking about? She was thinking, this is what he says, there would be a generation of many Jews, maybe most Jews, who would look externally like Esau. When you would look at them externally, you may think they're Esau. In terms of dress, in terms of culture, in terms of language, in terms of lifestyle, in terms of faith, in terms of observance, in terms of their whole Welt on Shaung and how they live. They don't look like Yaakov. Inside, they're Yaakov. They're Jewish, they're Yaakov. But outside they may appear like Esav. And Rivka had to ask a question. Will those Jews be included in the Brach <coughs> or not? If she would have sent in Yaakov as Yaakov, who would get the Bracha? Yaakov who looks like Yaakov. Yaakov with the Shtraimel. I mean the Shtraimel as a symbolic idea, of course. Rivka decided, that, the, and she knew that the Bracha has to go to every Jew. So she dressed up Yaakov like Esau. So who got the bracha? Hakoil kol Yaakov, even though hayadayim ide Esau. But the koil is a koil of Yaakov. The pnimius is Yaakov. So she ensured that every Jew, no matter his or her looks externally and how they define themselves, they're also part of the bracha. And what was the bracha? V'yitim l'cha alikim metal ha'shman m'shman yaret. So Chazal say, V'yitim l'cha alikim metal ha'shamayim zemikra. Shmane Aretz, the Mishnah, Rav Dagon is Gemara, Sirish is Abraisa. It wasn't only a blessing on grain and wine and corn and, and dew and etc. That too. But it was a brach on Mikra, Mishnah, Braisa, Lachalit. The Gemara goes through the whole Cheshbin of what it was. Who's included in this blessing of Mikra, Mishnah, Braisa, Gemara? Even the Jew who looks like Esav, but internally is Yaakov. That's what she ensured. That Jew also got the bracha. Not only Yaakov who looks like Yaakov, but also, and maybe in some ways, that's who the bracha was directed on. That's who she wanted to include. Now, take this on a deeper level, and you'll see how it's connected here. How can you explain this? The answer is because consciously he may be Esau, but unconsciously he's still Yaakov. So the bracha also came from a place that's deeper than consciousness. So it includes that aspect of a person that is unconscious. And that's why Yaakov put in water into the wine. Because wine represents a state of consciousness, of full alertness, vibrancy, life. You're fully aware of what you're doing. Nichnas yayin yatsasait. The person completely feels his pnimi as he's in touch with himself and so forth. 
Mayim doesn't have that. Mayim, in many ways, is tasteless, but it represents something that's very elusive, very transcendent, beyond consciousness. That's where the brachas of Yitzchak came, and therefore they relate to the unconscious of the Jew. Even the unconscious of the Jew, which may be the Yaakov in the Jew, what we would call the core of the Jew, the, the Pintaliyid, the Kudas Ayadus, and so forth, that also got the bracha. So that's Eretz Harim of Koyas, Limitar Hashamayim Tishtamayim. It's not just you get water from the rain. Limitar Hashamayim Tishtamayim. You give forth water, and therefore one also gets back, uh, gets back the water. And that's why you have the Levim singing on wine, the Shira, the concert is on the wine, but Nisu Hamayim on, uh, on Sukkot, that's where the great Simchas Beis HaShayev is. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.